Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of Mr. H's Hot Pot. Join me today, up at a Sparrow's Fart, out for a bit of a bimble. I'm trying to walk off some of those Mrs. Gent's pies that uh, I was eating recently in some of my previous videos. Now, today I'm currently back in Standish, and I'm making my way through a new build estate, as you can probably see in the background there. Now, this new build estate that I'm currently walking through wasn't always here and during the second world war there used to be an ROF depot currently where I'm walking now for those of you out there who've not a clue what an ROF depot is it stands for Royal Ordnance Factory which were the factories that was quickly set up during the second world war to produce armaments for Britain's war effort now what Britain did as opposed to Germany during the second world war was it set up its warp production by taking existing factories that were already here and turning them over to war production. The factory that used to stand here at Standish ROF was known as Imperial Chemical Industries, more commonly known by its initials ICI, Kynock Factory. And it was turned over to making 303 bullets, which was the standard ammunition of the British Army back then. And the 303 rounds that was made on this site, where I'm currently walking, made the way into the guns of the Spitfires, that classic, iconic fighter plane from the Second World War. So no doubt, many bullets made here pranged a Jerry Kite back in the day and uh, downed them and helped with the Battle of Britain. Now, although this new estate has sprung up and sort of covered most of the site that used to be here, there is still a little remnant from those days. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. Now I'm currently up at a Sparrow's Fart. And the reason for that will be pretty clear once we get to today's subject matter. So, I'm now going to make my way to this little uh, remnant. So folks, welcome back. I'm now approaching today's subject matter. And as you can probably see, I'm probably here... I'm currently on a main road. That's why I've tried to get up at a Sparrow's Fort to try and beat most of the traffic. I'll just let this vehicle go past. And I'll probably be doing a lot of that during this film because, as I said, I'm on a main road. I'm currently on Rectory Lane, which uh, is in Standish, or it's on the, the fringes of Standish. And I've made my way around to the back side of that new build estate that we've just been walking through. And I'm currently approaching the Oils restaurant, and that is where we'll find today's little remnant. What we're going to be taking a look at today is a World War II pillbox. And what's surprising with this pillbox is, number one, it's survived all this redevelopment that you can see in the background. And number two, you can only see it at certain times of the year. The time of the year being winter time, because all these trees grow and they hard it, make it good camouflage. Now, I do have a photograph of this particular pillbox, which I'll put in further on in this video. But we're going to take a look at it now, because I am approaching it. And uh, we'll just see what it looks like today. It's amazing to think that this has survived, as I said earlier in this video. And here we are, Rock Potters. Can you spot it there at the back of me? Right then, I'm going to whip the camera around now, cross the road... And uh, we'll take a closer look at this pillbox, shall we? And here it is, folks. Let's make our way across before Mr. H gets flattened. And just look at that. Now, I've no idea what type this pillbox is, because they do have types. Once again, traffic, I'll let that go past. But this, I should imagine, was placed here on the edge of the site to defend against Nazi invaders that would have been coming from down that road there or from across the fields that lie beyond this restaurant. That's the Oils restaurant there. And as you can see here, the estate has come right up to this old pillbox. Now what I'm going to do, what Potters, I'm going to be a little bit cheeky. And I'm going to step over that fence. 
and this is another side of this bunker it's going to make me way around this fence here and this is inside it Hot Potters look at this here we go no idea if that bench was added after the war or if it's original to this structure but yeah obviously it would be defending the road which you can just see out there looks like these have been bricked up over the years and this fence here leads into one of those houses imagine having this at the end of your yard hot potters and there we go there's the trees and that that's grown right against this but I know what potters that if I had this at the end of my yard I'd be cutting an hole in that fence or moving the fence further forward and I'd turn this into a little playhouse for Toby now like I say I've no idea what type of pillbox this is so if anybody out there does know any of your World War II buffs please let me know in the comments below I'm now going to hop back over that fence and we'll continue our commentary from there and there we go Hot Potters back safely on this side of the fence now I do have a photograph from the Lancashire at War website of this pillbox before all these houses was built and I'll put that in for you now and as you can see the landscape has changed massively since those houses were built and I'll be honest with you Hot Potters I thought that this little pillbox had been demolished when they started redeveloping the site a number of years ago so I was pleasantly surprised the other day when I was flying past in the old jalopy to just happen to look out of the window at the right time and see that it's still standing and I thought I'll make a mental note of uh, where it's located and I'll pop back and I'll take a look at it but yeah little World War II pillbox there that's still here after all these years it's survived the World War II and uh, more recently Morris Holmes with the redevelopment behind it and let's just hope Hot Potters for all our sakes that these kind of wartime structures will never be needed again especially in the light of what's currently going on over in Eastern Europe and the events that have unfolded over the last week or so right then I'm going to whip the camera around now and I think I'll wrap this video up right then folks that'll just about do it for today Hope oh, you've enjoyed today's little video, taking a look at an old World War II pillbox that's lying here, here in Standish, all these years on after the Second World War. And it is good to see, like I said, that Morris Holmes, who developed this old estate, have kept that World War II relic there for future generations to enjoy. Anyway, folks, I'm going to head back to the jalopy now and uh, get back. I'll edit up this video ready for your edification as always. If you do decide to come and take a look at that little World War II pillbox yourself, I don't condone anyone stepping over the fence like I did. I did that so you don't have to. Anyway, until the next time, from myself Mr H, it is bye bye for now.